This being the time and place established by GS 120-11.1 for the convening of the 2023 session of the General Assembly of North Carolina, the Senate will be in order. The Sergeant at Arms of the 2021 session will close, will clear the aisles and close the doors. Senators elect and guests will be seated. Members and guests are reminded to please silence all electronic devices. The chair takes great pleasure in extending courtesies of the floor and the gallery to the family and friends of our senators elect. Thank you for being with us today. We invite you to return at every opportunity. We are honored to have with us today former, former Governor Jim Hunt. Welcome, Governor Hunt. Where is Governor Hunt? Side note, Governor Hunt, you're, you're dear to my heart. When I was in school, you were the example that was used to teach us what a governor does. So thank you very much for being here. Very special uh, courtesy is extended to Mr. and Mrs. Mark Mosier of Greensboro. Where are you at? Please stand. And to Clayton City uh, Council member Mike Sims. Mike, where are you at? Thank you all for being here. These are my guests. Thank you for being here. The Sergeant at Arms is recognized. Mr. President, the Honorable Tamara Ber Berenger, Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina, and the Honorable Phil Berger, Jr., Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina are at the door and await your direction. The Sergeant at Arms will open the doors and admit the Honorable Tam Tamara Beringer, Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina, and the Honorable Phil Berger, Jr., Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina. All members and guests will please stand. Welcome Justice Beringer and Justice Berger. We greatly appreciate your participation in our opening ceremony and are happy to extend the courtesies of the floor to you today. The Sergeant at Arms is recognized. Mr. President, Master Sergeant Rhonda Vasquez of the North Carolina Army National Guard is at the door and awaits your direction. The Sergeant at Arms will open the doors and escort Master Sergeant Rhonda Vasquez of the North Carolina Army National Guard to the well of the chamber. We welcome you to the Senate Chamber, Master Sergeant Vasquez, and appreciate your participation in our opening ceremony. Thank you very much for being here. All members and guests in the gallery will please rise and remain standing for the prayer and the presentation of the colors, leading us in prayer as we begin this 2023 session of the North Carolina General Assembly is Pastor Steve Griffith of Osborne Baptist Church in Eden, North Carolina. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today in the name of your son, Jesus, by whom all things were created and in whom all things are sustained. God, I ask your blessings on these proceedings today. Father, I ask your blessings on these men and women who by your hand are here to serve the good people of North Carolina. I pray you encourage them on days when so many things seem against them. I pray, God, you give them humble hearts to serve well. God, I pray that you give them 
courage and strength and wisdom to lead well. And we pray in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Griffith. Sergeant at Arms is recognized. Mr. President, the Army Junior ROTC Color Guard of Moorhead High School in Eden, North Carolina, is at the door to present the colors and await your invitation. The Sergeant at Arms will now open the doors for the presentation of the colors by the Army Junior ROTC Color Guard from Moorhead High School in Eden, North Carolina. Permission granted. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Master Sergeant Vasquez and members of the Color Guard from Moorhead High School for being with us today. At this time, you may retire from the chamber. Members and guests may be seated. The clerk will now read the certification of the election as received from the Secretary of State, the Honorable Elaine Marshall, and call the roll of senators elect by district. When your name is called, please speak into your microphone to answer present and remain standing. The clerk will call the roll. I, Elaine F. Marshall, Secretary of State of the State of North Carolina, do hereby certify that the State Board of Elections met Tuesday, the 29th day of November, A.D. 2022, in accordance with Chapter 163 of General Statute of North Carolina, at which time the board did open, canvas, and judicially determined the returns of votes cast in the election held on Tuesday, 
November the 8th, 2022, and certified to me the persons duly elected as members of the Senate from the various Senate districts comprising of more than one county, and all others have been certified to me in the abstract by the State Board of Elections as having the highest number of votes cast in the election for the Senate from districts composed of one county only. For the General Assembly of 2023, to wit, first, Norman W. Sanderson. Second, Jim Perry. Present. Third, Bobby Hannick. Present. Fourth, Buck Newton. Present. Fifth, Handy D. Smith. Present. Sixth, Michael A. Lazaria. Present. Seventh, Michael Lee. Eighth, Bill Raven. Present. Ninth, Brent Jackson. Present. Tenth, Benton Sorry. Present. Eleventh, Lisa Stone Barnes. Present. Twelfth, Jim Bergen. Present. Thirteenth, Lisa Grafstein. Present. Fourteenth, Dan Blue. Present. Fifteenth, Jay Chaudry. Present. Sixteenth, Gail Adcock. Present. Seventeenth, Sydney Batch. Present. Eighteenth, Mary Willis Bodie. Present. Nineteenth, Val Applewhite. Present. Twentieth, Natasha S. Murdoch. Senator Natalie Murdoch, present. 21st, Tom McKinnis. Present. 22nd, Mike Woodard. Present. 23rd, Greg R. Meyer. Present. 24th, Danny Earl Britt, Jr. Senator Britt, present. 25th, Amy Scott Gailey. Present. 26th, Phil E. Berger. Present. 27th, Michael Garrett. Present. 28th, Gladys A. Robinson. Present. 29th, David Craven, Jr. Present. 30th, Stephen Jarvis. Present. 31st, Joyce. Provit. Present. 32nd, Paul W. Lowe, Jr. Present. Present, that's Paul A. Lowe, Jr. Okay. 33rd, Carl Ford. Present. 34th, Carl R. Newton. Present. 35th, Todd Johnson. Present. 36th, Eddie Settle. Present. 37th, Vicki Sawyer. Present. 38th, Mushafa Muhammad. Present. 39th, DeAndrea Salvador. Present. 40th, Joyce Waddell. Present. 41st, Natasha Marcus. Present. 42nd, Rachel Hunt. Present. 43rd, Brad Overcash. Present. 44th, Ted Alexander. Present. 45th, Dean Proctor. Present. 46th, Warren Daniel. Present. 47th, Ralph Heiss. Present. 48th, Tim Moffat. Present. 49th, Julie Mayfield. Present. 50th, Kevin Corbin. Present. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and affixed my official seal, 
done in office at Raleigh this 13th of December, 2022. Elaine Marshall, Secretary of State. Senators elect, you will find your holy book on your desk. Some of you may have your personal volume. At this time, the chair invites your spouse or guest to stand with you as you take your oath of office. The oath will be administered to the senators elect by the Honorable Tamara Beringer of the Supreme Court of North Carolina. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution and laws of the United States? And do you solemnly and sincerely swear or affirm that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authority which are or may be established for government thereof, and that you will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution and the laws of said state not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States to the best of your knowledge and ability? And do you solemnly and sincerely swear or affirm that you will faithfully discharge the duties of your office as a member of the Senate of the 2023 General Assembly of the State of North Carolina to the best of your knowledge and ability, so help you God. Congratulations to each and every one of you. You may be seated. Fifty senators being present and having taken the oath of office, I declare a quorum present and qualified. Initiated from 32159299911 with description NCGA Police Control Center 1, LB Garage. Okay, I'm not really sure what any of that meant. I hope it's not dangerous, but okay. <laughs> The Senate will now proceed with the election of a president pro tempore as established by the Constitution of North Carolina and who shall serve until the expiration of the term of office as senator. The chair declares nominations are in order for the office of president pro tempore of the 2023, 2023 Senate. Senator Newton, for what purpose do you rise? To make a nomination. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, it is my honor to nominate Senator Phil Berger of Rockingham County for President Pro Tempore of the United of the North Carolina Senate, uh, he deserves that too. But uh, <laughs> having served in this body as President Pro Tem since 2011, Senator Berger has led this chamber with honor and poise. Within these walls, debate is not limited, and members of both sides of the aisle are heard. The respect Senator Berger shows to each individual who walks through these doors sets a standard that every state legislature should aspire to. Senator Berger, wherever you are, we are grateful to serve under your leadership. The impact of a great pro tem is not confined to the decorum within these walls. Since 2011, the entire state of North Carolina has benefited from the vision that Senator Berger brings to this chamber. From making North Carolina the leader of the flat tax revolution to putting in place the foundation for our state to become the number one state for business. This body's list of accomplishments under Senator Berger's leadership is extensive and touches every corner of the state. With the possibility of an impending recession and a new biennium of challenges ahead of us, there is only one person who will most effectively lead this body. I believe Senator Berger to be this leader. He knows what government needs to do for the betterment of society. He knows what we as members need to do for North Carolina to prosper in times of uncertainty. Senator Berger continues his legal practice in my hometown of Eden. And I see bedrock small town values in him at work every day, integrity, trust, perseverance. But most importantly, 
Senator Berger is family first. He always finds time for his wife, Pat, his children, and his grandchildren. I have no doubt that Senator Berger is once again the right senator for this job. Mr. President, it is my honor and privilege to nominate Philip Berger of Rockingham County for President Pro Tempore of the 2023 North Carolina Senate. Mr. President. Senator Rabin, what purpose do you rise? Uh, to second the nomination of uh, Philip Berger and to make a few comments, please, sir. Thank you. Yep, go ahead. Uh, colleagues, friends, uh, guests, uh, today is a special day. And I believe it's an important day for, lo for lots of reasons. It's important to gather here with people who made this day possible. Our loved ones, our staff, our support system, and our voters. And I believe it is important to begin this two-year session with the spirit of bipartisanship and togetherness. I hope you all will enjoy this day and remember the reverence you feel in this place. This is the seventh time, <clears throat> excuse me, that I've had the honor of being part of this day. I stood in this chamber 12 years ago, and let me tell you, a lot has changed in those 12 years. Our state has changed. Our policies, of course, have changed. This body has changed. With so many new colleagues present today and in the past on both sides of the aisle. Even those who were here 12 years ago, Senator Blue, are a little longer in the teeth. And we have changed. In my view, our politics have changed as well. The temperature, unfortunately, feels higher than it used to. The partisan rancor is a little more common, and our sense of congeniality seems to have lost its way something I hope we can work on in 2023. But over the past 12 years, there's at least one thing about this place, or rather one person, who has been remarkably steady, consistent, and dependable. Phil Berger is the same person today as the man I got to know 12 years ago. Many of you know I'm a veterinarian, and I know a threatened and an endangered species when I see one. And Phil Berger is the rarest of public servants. He has the same impe impeccable character today that he had 12 years ago. The same humility, the same resolve, the same principles, the same honesty, the same toughness, the same sense of duty, the same lack of ego. Phil Berger has certainly changed this body and this state, and I believe for the better. But this place has not changed Phil Berger. We're fortunate to have his leadership for the past 12 years and 12 years ago, and we're fortunate to have his leadership today. It is my great honor to second the nomination of Philip E. Berger to serve as President Pro Tem of the Senate. And Mr. President, I furthermore move that the nomination be closed. The motion is that the nominations be closed and the denomination of Senator Philip E. Berger as President Pro Tempore of the 2023 Senate be accepted by acclamation. Is there discussion or debate? If not, all in favor will say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And the chair declares Senator Philip E. Berger of Rockingham County unanimously elected to the office of President Pro Tempore of the 2023 Senate. Senator Paul Newton, Senator Rabin, Senator Blue, and Senator Barnes are appointed as a committee to escort President uh, Pro Tempore elect Philip E. Berger to the well of the Senate to receive the oath of office.
Senator Newton, you have the floor. Mr. President, members, I present to you President pro tempore elect Senator Philip Berger. Thank you, Senator Newton. The escort committee may return to their seats. Members and guests may be seated. The Sergeant at Arms may escort Luke Snyder and Ashley Berger Snyder to the well of the Senate to stand with President Pro Tempore elect Berger. Honorable Phil Berger, Jr. of the Supreme Court of North Carolina will administer the oath. Please state your name. Phil Berger. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution and laws of the United States, so help you God? I do. And do you solemnly and sincerely swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof, and will, will you endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution and laws of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, to the best of your knowledge and ability? I will. And do you solemnly and sincerely swear that you will faithfully discharge your duties as President pro tempore of the 2023 General Assembly to the best of your skill and ability, so help you God? I will, so help me God. Congratulations, Senator Berger. The chair has the great honor of recognizing you to address the Senate and our guests. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor Robinson, Justice Berenger, Justice Berger, my fellow senators, uh, Majority Leader Newton, M Minority Leader Blue, family, friends, and those joining us uh, via the internet, uh, which is live streaming uh, all of our all of our proceedings today. I want to thank you for the warm welcome and for bestowing on me the uh, real high honor of continuing to serve as President Pro Tempore of the North Carolina Senate. Before I begin, I want to uh, thank, again, although they've left, uh, the members of the Color Guard from Moorhead High School in Eden uh, and Master Sergeant Rhonda Vasquez for helping to make this event special and memorable for all of us. And I would like to thank and recognize our clerk, Sarah Holland, and her staff for all they do to help us. And finally, thanks to our Sergeant at Arms, Bob Myrick, and his staff for their help and assistance. Uh, I'm presupposing some things that are going to happen as we go forward. But uh, uh, we enter this new year and new legislative session with a renewed commitment to the people of North Carolina. While today is a ceremonious occasion for the General Assembly, we must remember why we are here. We're here because the people of North Carolina placed faith in us to care for the state they love. This day is as much about them as it is about us. Their voices, uttered through ballot boxes across North Carolina, signaled the direction they want North Carolina to take. North Carolina is growing every day. Between July 2021 and July 2022, nearly 100,000 new residents moved here from other states. Many to escape states like New York, Illinois, and California, where opportunities and jobs are hard to come by. Those new residents see the promise in North Carolina of more freedom, of an opportunity to prosper, and of a bright future for themselves and their families. As more people find a home here, we must remain committed to what has made North Carolina the best state in which to live, to work, and to raise a family. A little over a decade ago, a new majority gained control of this body and of the chamber on the other side of this building. That new majority made a commitment to the people that North Carolina would take a new direction. I stood before this body at that time and said that history would judge 
the success or failure of that commitment. Looking back, we were in a dire situation at that time. We inherited a two and a half billion dollar budget deficit. Teachers and state employees were facing layoffs. Job creation was lagging and North Carolina's tax and regulatory climate were both impediments to growth and to employment. Our vision for North Carolina was clear, smaller, smarter, more efficient government, and a confidence that the private sector would respond positively to lower taxes and less government red tape. Over the last 12 years, and following the simple formula of lower taxes, less regulation, and a commitment to quality education, our state has flourished. North Carolina regularly ranks as a top state for business and jobs. We continue to recruit and attract a wide variety of employers and entrepreneurs to the state. The big job announcements grab the headlines, but every job created in the private sector, facilitated by conservative state policy, makes an impact. And look at the result. Since 2011, more than 643,000 new jobs have been created in North Carolina. Our unemployment rate has dropped, the rate of citizens in po poverty has been reduced, and thanks to historic reductions in tax rates, North Carolinians are keeping more of their money. Confounded so confounding so-called experts in government finance, we accomplished all this and at the same time saw revenue to state coffers exceed projections, creating record state surpluses and a rainy day reserve fund that is the envy of our neighboring states. Those results were not achieved by accident or happenstance. In contrast, what we've done with what is happening in those states that our new residents are fleeing, high taxes, out of control government spending, schools that cater to bureaucrats instead of students and parents, and politicians and special interest activists trampling the values that many Americans and North Carolinians still hold dear. Today I can't help but think about what we have done and what we will continue to do for our citizens, their children, their grandchildren, and for generations to come. Many, many articulate as a goal to leave something better than when they found it. Without question, North Carolina and its state government are in a far better place today than 12 years ago. Now we must build on that success so future generations of North Carolinians can reach even greater heights. We must provide them with the tools needed to determine their future, from a world-class education to finding a good paying job in a career of their choice or to the freedom and opportunity to open their own businesses. All of the accolades we collect now aren't guaranteed in the future. Presently, we're the best state in which to live, work, and do business, but the wrong policy decisions could change that status at any moment. In order to stay on top, we must continue to make the right decisions and do the hard work to, ma hard work to maintain and improve the opportunities that currently exist. We must continue to keep regulations in check and roll back those that are unnecessary and create, imp and create impediments to growth and job creation. We must effectively address critical infrastructure needs like roads, water and sewer, and broadband. We must continue to demand world-class educational opportunities for our students. We've made incredible strides, but there is always more to be done. Parents across North Carolina want a greater say in their child's education. From being involved and knowledgeable about curriculum to the opportunity to send their child to a school that fits that child's educational needs. Our schools must be focused on serving students and parents. In previous sessions, legislators came together to pass historic legislation to return students to in-person instruction and to address childhood literacy. We're seeing some promising gains since we passed the Excellent Public Schools Act of 2021 and implemented the science of reading in our elementary school curriculum. We cannot be complacent 
simply because we're starting to see gains. There are still far too many students who are struggling to read. We must renew and redouble efforts to improve reading outcomes for all students. We must disabuse ourselves of the notion that more money alone buys positive outcomes for students. Success in education policy is, more, is about more than hitting some arbitrary funding goal. This isn't a partisan issue. We must come together to ensure that our students can read and have the opportunity for a quality education. Without question, education is the great equalizer in a free society. We fail in our most important task if we fail to recognize and act on that fact. We need our K-12, community college, and university systems to work together to meet the demands of a 21st century economy. As we begin to look at the issues we must tackle in the upcoming biennium, one of those issues is expanding Medicaid. I support, I support expanding Medicaid. However, we must recognize that it is not a silver bullet. North Carolinians are saddled with some of the highest health care costs in the country. We need to eliminate regulatory red tape and other bureaucratic barriers that impede access to care and unnecessarily increase medical costs. I intend to work towards expanding Medicaid together with the necessary regulatory changes to expand access to care. I hope you will join me. North Carolinians deserve to feel safe in their communities. We will continue to support law enforcement and uphold rights guaranteed by the Second Amendment. It is our duty as elected officials to represent the people. We must come together no matter our party to find solutions and follow through on those solutions. While the voters returned a Republican supermajority to this chamber, endorsing the conservative policies that have restored North Carolina as the leader in the Southeast, I believe we can achieve a shared goal of moving North Carolina forward. Despite any disagreements, we owe it to the people of this great state to work tirelessly for them. I'm optimistic about our state's future, just as I was 12 years ago. To the people of North Carolina, thank you for trusting us to serve you. May God bless this chamber, may God bless North Carolina, and may God bless everyone here. Thank you. The next order of business to come before the Senate is the adoption of rules of procedure by which this body shall govern itself. Senator Rabin is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that Senate Resolution 1 be filed and brought before the Senate for first reading and immediate consideration on second reading. Introduction of a resolution. Clerk will read. Senate Resolution 1, adopting the permanent rules of the Senate for the regular session of the 2023 General Assembly. Second reading of Senate Resolution 1. The clerk will read. Senate Resolution 1, Senate Permanent Rules. Senator Rabin is recognized to explain the resolution. Thank you, Mr. President, members. Uh, our Senate uh, rules for this biennium look a lot like they have in the past uh, sessions. Uh, there are a handful of substantive changes, and I will address those for you uh, one by one. Uh, bill requests and filing deadlines, which is Rule 40.2, 
uh, are as follows. Local bills filing on February 23rd and uh, drafting on February 23rd and filing by March 9th. Public bills, the dates are filing deadline March 9th and uh, uh, they have to be on out before us by April 4th. Uh, crossover date will be May 4th. Uh, there are a couple of changes intended to add flexibility uh, to our members. The co-sponsor deadline we heard a lot about last, uh, uh, last session uh, is changing. We're giving the members an extra legislative day to co-sponsor bills. The way this will work is that members will have until 5 o'clock uh, the day after filing the next legislative day uh, for a bill to uh, go to the floor, and that is a, uh, the day after the first reading. So you file it one day, first reading is the next day, and you have until 5 o'clock the following day. Uh, it gives us a little more time to take care of that. Uh, blank local bills. We've had some problems with that in the past. Uh, we're modifying the rule to allow members to file a local bill in the short session. If they filed a bill in the long session uh, that did not come up, or if you just did not file one in the long session. So you basically have the entire uh, biennium to get your local bill across the, the line. Senate resolutions. Uh, uh, we get num numerous requests from both sides of the aisle and both parties to file resolutions, uh, honoring and celebrating and memorializing uh, various events. Uh, we are uh, intent as our rules our intent in making sure that we file resolutions simply uh, for deceased members of this chamber. Uh, if there is an event that is broadly warranted uh, and this body feels that we can handle that uh, as an exception in Rule 41.B. Uh, notice of uh, committees and, and P, uh, uh, PCSs. A PCS being noticed for a committee needs to go out by 6 p.m. the night before. A custom in the Senate has been that the PCS be discussed but not voted on at the meeting noticed, and we'll continue that. The change clarifies that if for some reason a bill needs to be voted the next day and the PCS goes after 6, uh, you will need the approval of the rules chair, Rule 41 or 45.1, for those of you following the rule book. <laughs> the PAGE program, uh, both chambers have decided uh, to offer the program to students in grades 10 through 12. This helps ensure that older students get opportunities to participate. Uh, we're adding a vice chair of rules this year, and we're adding language that states the vice chair of the rules can act in the absence of the rules chairman or at the discretion of the rules chairman. Finally, uh, visitor material, we're removing the requirement that visitors give written approval to the principal clerk before taking members to uh, material to members' offices. Happy to discuss any of those uh, with anyone that uh, is not clear. You will be uh, getting, of course, a copy in the coming days, and uh, I urge your uh, support to uh, these changes. I think they will help us all uh, and make us all a little more comfortable as we go through the biennium. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there a discussion or debate? Hearing none, the question before the Senate is the adoption of Senate Resolution 1. All those in favor of the adoption of Senate Resolution 1 will vote aye, opposed no. Ten seconds will be allowed for voting. The clerk will record the vote. Is that Senator Wilkes? Senator Settle. Senator Settle. Mr. President, I mashed the button, but it clearly is not working. Aye or nay? Aye. Aye. Senator Settle. Get some bigger specs. I'm going one. 50 having voted in the affirmative, zero in the negative, the rules of the 2023 Senate are adopted. The Senate rule, Senate Rule 65 establishes the office of the Deputy President Pro Tempore. 
The nominations are now in order for Deputy President Pro Tempore of the 2023 Senate. Senator Kravitz, for what purpose do you rise? Thank you, Mr. President. To make a nomination. You have the floor. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, members, I rise today to um, happily uh, place in nomination the name of Senator Ralph Heiss for position of Deputy President Pro Tem. Um, Senator Heiss has uh, led us in this position for the last four years and has done an outstanding job. Uh, my relationship with Senator Heiss uh, predates he or I being here in the Senate. His, uh, his mom was a dear friend of mine, so um, I should have been his mentor, but we reversed the roles, and when I came to the Senate, Senator Heiss became my mentor, and I have learned so much from him. You all probably know that he attended the North Carolina School of Math and Science, that he graduated from Appalachian, and that he has a master's degree from NC State, and that he's a statistician. And what does that mean? That means that he is brilliant. <laughs> and he truly is. Um, and Senator Heiss has uh, led this, this body through some major pieces of legislation, uh, one being Medicaid transformation. That was a huge lift, and without Senator Heiss's expertise, and his knowledge of all things healthcare and Medicaid, um, I don't believe we would have been able to get it done, certainly not with the efficiency that we were able to get it done. Um, even though he is brilliant, he's a very humble man, and he has this gift to dumb things down where I can understand them. And I really appreciate that because he has been, um, he has been a godsend to me in, um, in, when we were co-chairs together in health care, and I always have said many times in this body, when Senator High speaks, nobody needs to say anything. Everything's been said. And I always hated it when we were co-chairs together and we would have a, uh, we would have co-sponsored a bill and he would speak on it and then he would want me to add something to it. And I always thought there's nothing else to say. Senator Heiss has a gift to say it where we can all understand it. Uh, I am very honored, Mr. President, to place his name in nomination, and I encourage all of you to support the nomination. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Newton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise to second the nomination and to make a motion. You have the floor for your motion. So, members, I rise to second the nomination of the for the Office of Deputy President Pro Tempore of the North Carolina Senate. Ralph Heiss of Mitchell County has dutifully served this body as Deputy President Pro Tempore since 2019, helping usher in important changes to our state government. His leadership in this role, as well as serving as co-chair, really, of numerous committees, but most recently appropriations and redistricting and elections, has been exemplary and effective Senator Heiss will continue to serve this body honorably and is the right member to assist Senator Berger as his deputy here in the Senate. Therefore, Mr. President, I'm honored to second the nomination of Senator Heiss for deputy pro tempore of the North Carolina Senate and do move that the nominations be closed and that Senator Heiss's nomination be accepted by acclamation. Thank you. The motion is that the nominations be closed and the, no the nomination of Senator Ralph Heiss for Deputy President Pro Tempore of the 2023 Senate be accepted by acclamation. Is there discussion or debate? If not, all those in favor will say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the chair declares Senator Ralph Heiss of Mitchell County unanimously elected to the office of De Deputy President Pro Tempore of the 2023 Senate. Senator Daniel, Senator Gailey, Senator Sanderson, and Senator Buck Newton are appointed to escort Deputy President Pro Tempore elect Ralph Heiss to the well of the Senate to receive the oath of office.
Senator Daniel, you have the floor. Mr. President, members of the Senate, honored guests, it's my honor to present to you the Deputy President Pro Tempore of the North Carolina Senate for 2023, Senator Ralph Heiss. Thank you, Senator Daniel. The escort committee may return to their seats. Members and guests may be seated. The Sergeant at Arms may escort Mrs. Lynn Heist to the well of the Senate to stand with the Deputy President Pro Tempore elect. The Honorable Tamara Beringer of the North Carolina Supreme Court will administer the oath. The oath. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lieutenant Governor. Do you, Ralph Heiss, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution and laws of the United States, so help you God? I do. Do you solemnly and sincerely swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authority which are or may be established for the government thereof, and you will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution and laws of said state not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States to the best of your knowledge and ability. I do. And do you solemnly and sincerely swear that you will faithfully discharge your duties as Deputy President Pro Tempore of the 2023 General Assembly to the best of your skill and ability, so help you God. So help me God, I do. Congratulations. Congratulations, Senator Heiss. You have the floor to address the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President, President Pro Tempore, distinguished members of the judiciary, visitors, guests, and my fellow members of the Senate. Thank you for your vote. I will work to the very best of my abilities for this office to support the President Pro Tempore of Phil Berger and all the members of this exalted chamber. I truly appreciate the support that you have all given me. Justice Berenger, I truly appreciate you coming down and giving the oath of office today. It was an honor to serve with you in this amazing body, and I'm humbled that you would take the time to return and fulfill this role for this chamber and myself. I'd also like to extend a heartfelt thank you to our president, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, we look forward to continued working alongside you and remain excited about your historical service and what that means for the citizens of North Carolina. I will keep my comments brief. For three sessions now, you have afforded me the privilege to stand and serve you in this role. I want to start by recognizing and honoring my wife, Lynn, my sons, Thomas Heiss and Darren Heiss, and my mother-in-law who's with me today, Mary Ann England. Thank you. None of us are able to serve here through our own strength and abilities. The support of my family, just like the support of those who are with each of you today, and the many others who are unable to be here, are the true reasons that we have this privilege to serve and to make our state so successful. When I began 12 years ago, Senator Jim Forrester stood in this very place in this position and declared the dawn of a new age in the history of the North Carolina Senate. He also quoted the speaker, John Bonner, for the U.S. House of Representatives in saying, it's not as much a time of celebration as it is for humility and hard work. Under the unmatched leadership of Senator Phil Berger, we have transformed this state, and we will continue to make North Carolina the lighthouse of our blessed nation. As I have searched for words to say at this moment, given everything we're seeing in this nation right now, skyrocketing prices, labor shortages, uncertainty, fear, predictions of recession, even rumors of war, I am constantly drawn back to a scripture from 2 Chronicles 
chapter 7, verses 13 and 15. When the Lord said to His people, If I shut up the heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. And I ask of each of you, is not only that you do all you can in and through this legislative body to improve the condition and lives for all the constituents we serve, but I also ask you that as leaders, each of you answers a higher purpose and lift up your districts, this state, and this nation as stated in our state constitution and just affirmed by our oath, to Almighty God, the sovereign ruler of nations, that he may hear our land. Thank you. Constitution of North Carolina directs the Senate to elect its other officers. The general statute defined them to be a principal clerk and a sergeant at arms. The chair now declares nominations are in order for the office of principal clerk of the 2023 Senate. Mr. Senator President. Raven, you have the floor. Uh, to make a nomination. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Members, today I rise to nominate Sarah Holland to continue as a principal clerk. For more than a decade, Sarah has served this body honorably and ably. Every senator here has come to or soon will come to rely on Sarah's knowledge of our Senate process, her professionalism, her competence, and her kindness. Sarah is not only a consummate professional herself, she leads an entire staff of dedicated and responsive public servants. They're some of the first people here in the morning some of the last to leave at night. She has also consistently strived to streamline and improve our Senate operations. Over the last two years in particular, I've been impressed with Sarah's ability to turn the challenge of conducting the public business during a pandemic into an opportunity to improve our systems further. During this time, she led a seamless switch to electronic bill filing and electronic sponsorship of pages uh, just among many of the other improvements. She's done an outstanding job for the Senate, and I'm pleased to recognize her and recommend her to serve this body for another term. With that, Mr. President, I formally recognize Sarah Holland to serve as principal clerk of the Senate 2023 Senate. Thank you. Senator Heiss. <clears throat> to second the motion, uh, to second the nomination and make a motion. You have the floor for your motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, I rise to second the nomination of Sarah Holland to serve as principal clerk of the 2023 North Carolina Senate. Uh, members, for those who were here or those who've just heard the stories, I take you back to when I came into this chamber 12 years ago uh, and remember this thing we all had called bill books. Your legislative got to spend, your legislative assistant got to spend most of the morning making sure that you had every copy of every bill uh, in your desk, um, ready to go, with the hopes that no one amended or changed anything uh, before that book got here. And I think most of you who have served know our process well enough to know that that generally didn't work out the best uh, in the world. And so we had these long lines of individuals that would have to print out all the copies, and we would just, uh, you know, come almost in receiving lines 
to pick the bills up, especially when we got near days to cross over and others. Uh, when we agreed to change that, uh, Sarah and her staff uh, were really the ones that had to make every bit of that happen. Um, and, you know, and I will say the one, uh, almost knock I could say on legislators in general, uh, most of us are not technology experts uh, when we come here. And to have someone who could uh, lead us through that process, it has been 12 years now that she has served in this role. Uh, and I would challenge anyone here to identify a single error that's occurred in 12 years uh, with our bills. That wasn't the fault of the house. I'm going to put that in there. So <laughs> sometimes they don't know how to send things over and the uh, special messenger gets lost uh, in this process. But uh, I couldn't be more excited to have her serve in this role. We have uh, seen her grow, and she's been there when we've gone through challenges, and we've seen her go through challenges, and I'm just excited that she will continue to serve for another two years, and I'm honored that uh, we will continue uh, to select her for that. And I further move that nominations be closed and that Sarah Holland's nomination as principal clerk be accepted by acclamation. The motion is that the nominations be closed and that the nomination of Sarah Holland for the principal clerk of the Senate for the 2023 session be accepted by acclamation. Is there discussion or debate? If not, those in favor will say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And the chair declares Sarah Holland unanimously elected to the office of principal clerk of the Senate for the 2023 session. The sergeant at arms will escort the principal clerk elect to the well of the Senate to receive the oath of office. The sergeant at arms may also escort Mr. Perry Holland to the well of the Senate to stand with the principal clerk elect. The Honorable Phil Berger, Jr. of the Supreme Court of North Carolina will administer the oath. Please state your name. Sarah Holland. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution and laws of the United States? Do you solemnly and sincerely swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof? And will you endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution and laws of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, to the best of your knowledge and ability? Do you solemnly and sincerely swear that you will faithfully discharge your duties as principal clerk of the Senate of the 2023 General Assembly to the best of your skill and ability? So help me God. Congratulations, Madam Clerk. You may please assume your seat. Thank you. <laughs> Nominations are now in order for the Sergeant at Arms of the 2023 Senate. Senator Bergen, for what purpose do you rise? To make a nomination. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, I rise to nominate Robert Bob Myrick to serve as Senate Sergeant at Arms. Bob Myrick is a proud alumni of East Carolina University. Since his graduation in 1976, he has been busy. He played professional football in the Canadian Football League. He was a high school coach, teacher, and administrator. And in 1983, Bob realized his lifelong ambition when he joined the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Bob spent more than 25 years increasingly in, in working in increasingly sophisticated cases in areas of organized crime, violent crime, as well as domestic and international terrorism. During his career, the FBI took full advantage of Bob's organizational, supervisory, and leadership abilities. Bob was an instructor, as well as unit chief, at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia, a supervisor with the Special Operations and Research Unit, and later the Critical Incident Response Group, where his assignments took him and his teams and agents around the globe. Bob's final FBI position was with the United States Marine Corps during Operation Enduring Freedom. 
When Bob retired in 2008, he signed on as a contractor with the Marine Corps and later worked as an independent contractor in Egypt and East Africa. Bob joined the Sergeant at Arms staff in 2011 and he has been the Sergeant at Arms since 2019. Bob has served on the Board of Directors of the New Hanover County Law Enforcement Association, the FBI Retired Associations, and is just involved in his community in so many ways. He is also a former commissioner of the North Carolina Criminal Justice Education and Trainer, Training Standards Commission. Bob and his wife, Linda, live in Wilmington. They have two children, Scott, daughter-in-law, Jessica, and Carolyn, Caroline, daughter, uh, son-in-law, Aaron, one granddaughter, Della Francis, and two grandsons, Lincoln, Lincoln and Quincy. It is my honor uh, to nominate my good friend, Bob Myrick. With that, Mr. President, I formally nominate Bob Myrick to serve as Sergeant at Arms of the 2023 North Carolina Senate. Senator Crawford, for what purpose do you rise? To uh, second the nomination and um, make a motion. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, I'm honored to second the nomination of Bob Myrick, and you just heard his outstanding qualifications. Uh, we could not be more fortunate to have someone serve in this position than Bob Myrick. Um, he's done an outstanding job serving us as Sergeant at Arms over the last few years, leading a very capable team um, and taking care of those, of those of us, those members here in this chamber. Um, with all of his qualifications, he is such a humble man and such a gentleman. And I am so honored to second his nomination. And uh, Mr. President, I uh, second that nomination and I also move that the nominations be closed and that Bob Myrick's nomination be accepted by acclamation. Thank you, Mr. President. The motion is that the nominations be closed and that the nomination of Robert Myrick for Sergeant at Arms of the 2023 Senate be accepted by acclamation. Is there discussion or debate? If not, those in favor will say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And the chair declares Robert Myrick unanimously elected to the office of Sergeant at Arms of the Senate for the 2023 session. The Sergeant at Arms may proceed to the well to receive the oath of office. Mrs. Linda Mark will also be escorted to the well to stand with the Sergeant at Arms elect. The Honorable Tamara Beringer of the Supreme Court of North Carolina will administer the oath. Thank you, Mr. President. If you will place your uh, left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you, Robert Myrick, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution and laws of the United States? I do. Do you solemnly and sincerely swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authority which are or may be established for government thereof, and that you will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution and laws of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, to the best of your knowledge and ability. So help me God, I do. And do you solemnly and sincerely swear that you will faithfully discharge your duties as Sergeant at Arms of the Senate of the 2023 General, General Assembly to the best of your skill and ability? So help you God. So help me God, I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Myrick. You may assume your position. A message from the Majority Caucus. The clerk will read. Dear President Robinson, this is to advise you that the Senate Republican Caucus met on November 28, 2022, with 30 members present and elected the following officers for the 2023 session of the General Assembly. Senate Majority Leader, Senator Paul Newton. Senate Majority Whip, Senator Tom McInnes. Senator Majority Whip, Senator Jim Perry. Republican Joint Caucus Leader, Senator Carl Ford. 
In addition, the following officers were nominated for the 2023 session of the General Assembly. Pres President Pro Tempore, Senator Phil Berger. Deputy President Pro Tempore, Senator Ralph Heiss. Principal Clerk, Ms. Sarah Long Holland. Sergeant at Arms, Mr. Robert Myrick. Sincerely, Senator Paul Newton, Majority Leader of the Republican Caucus. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you. <laughs> Message from the Minority Caucus. Clerk will read. Dear Lieutenant Governor Robinson, the Senate Democratic Caucus met on December 5, 2022 and elected the following officers for the 2023-24 legislative session. Senator Daniel T. Blue, Wake County Minor Minority Leader. Senator J. Chaudhry, Wake County Minority Whip. Senator Julie Mayfield, Buncombe County Caucus Secretary. Respectfully, Senator Julie Mayfield, Senator Democratic Caucus Secretary. Please stand as your name is uh, announced uh, and the chair recognizes Senator Daniel Blue, Minority Leader, Senator Jay Chaudhary, Minority Whip, Senator Julie Mayfield, Caucus Secretary. Congratulations to you all. Thank you very much. Mr. President. Senator Raven, for what purpose do you rise? A motion, please, Mr. President. You have the floor. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. President, members, having voted in the majority of the election of Senator Phil Berger as president pro tempore, I move the, Senator, the Senate do now reconsider the vote by which he was elected, and I further move the motion to lie upon the table. Senator Perry, for what purpose do you rise? Mr. President, um, to second the motion to lay upon the table. The motion has been moved and seconded. This is a non-debatable motion and will go straight to a vote. Question before the body is to motion, is the motion to table the motion to reconsider the vote for President Pro Tempore. All in favor will vote aye. All opposed will vote no. Ten seconds will be allowed for voting and the clerk will record the vote. Fifty having voted in the affirmative, zero in the negative, the motion has been tabled. Senator Rabin is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, the uh, uh, motion to uh, Adjourn, I believe, has been uh, been filed, and I move that uh, we move forward with uh, that. Please, the clerk will read. We will, I will discuss it, and we'll go forward. Without objection, so ordered. Introduction of a resolution. The clerk will read. Senate Joint Resolution Two, adjourning the 2023 regular session of the General Assembly to a date certain as approved by law. Senate Joint Resolution 2 on its second reading. The clerk will read. Senate Joint Resolution 2, adjourn 2023 organizational session. Senator Rabin is recognized to explain the resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, this is a uh, joint resolution that we have to do with the House to adjourn uh, since we are going to be out for more than three days. Uh, what we will do is we will adjourn at the end of today's session to reconvene. Uh, back in our regular session at noon, Wednesday, January 25th, uh, 2023. I, I encourage you to support this uh, motion to adjourn. Is there further discussion or debate? Hearing none, the question before the Senate is the passage of Senate Joint Resolution 2 on its second reading. All in favor uh, will vote aye. Opposed, no. 10 seconds will be allowed for voting. And the clerk will record the vote.
Senator Lowe. I, Senator Meyer. I, Senator I. 50 having voted in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Senate Joint Resolution 2 has passed its second reading and without objection will be read a third time. The General Assembly of North Carolina enacts. Is there further discussion or debate? Hearing none, all in favor of the passage of Senate Joint Resolution 2 on its third reading will say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And Senate Joint Resolution 2 passes its third reading and will be sent to the House by special message. I have a note here that says that I'm supposed to say a few words or give a speech. Um, I, I don't really write speeches, as most of you all know, but I think uh, I think what I guess I'll say to you all is this. It's been a pleasure uh, working with you the last session, although it drug on and on and on. It was almost like that Groundhog Day movie. But what I really want to say is this. Uh, some of you all may have heard this story before. When I was a child growing up in Greensboro, I used to sit on the porch of my house and take the trash can lid. And I used to dream about driving off to great places, driving a big semi truck or driving a big ship or maybe even dreaming of drive, driving a spacecraft in outer space. And, you know, I bring that up because of this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're not here for ourselves. We are not here for ourselves. We are here to make dreams possible for people, to help people's dreams be possible, to help the people of North Carolina real, realize their dreams, to make those dreams a reality. I urge each and every one of you to work together to that end, to help the dreams of the people of North Carolina to become a reality. So those little kids out there like me who dream of doing great things can also do great things in this state. But it's been a pleasure working with all of you. Looking forward to the session. Enjoy your professionalism, and I hope we have a great session. Thank you all. <laughs> Senators, having received your oath of office, adopted rules of procedure, and elected your officers, the chair directs the principal clerk to send a message to the House of Representatives informing that honorable body that the Senate of the 2023 20, General Assembly is organized and ready to proceed with public business. Are there any other notices or announcements? With no further business to come before the Senate, the chair will entertain a motion for adjournment and recognizes Senator Berger. Sorry, Mr. President, I was otherwise occupied. So give me just a moment. <laughs> Mr. President, I move that the Senate do now adjourn in accordance with Senate Joint Resolution 2, subject to the provisions of Senate Rule 24.1, to reconvene on Wednesday, January 25th, 2023, at 12 o'clock noon. The motion by Senator Berger, seconded by Senator Rabin, is that the Senate do now adjourn pursuant to Senate Joint Resolution 2, subject to stipulations stated by Senator Berger to reconvene on Wednesday, January 25th, at 20, uh, 2023, at 12 p.m. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Senate stands adjourned.